Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that all three major indexes fell for the week, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. We all fell pretty hard this week. And now all three indexes are now negative for the year. The Dow has joined the NASDAQ and S&P 500 as negative uh, for the week. Uh, we started the week off, uh, of course, with the news of our political system where the uh, legendary super committee was unable to come to some type of agreement. And so we know that there are some trigger cuts coming in 2013. Uh, and so that really kind of set the, the week off kind of negative. Um, you can see that this was the worst Thanksgiving week uh, ever. Just this week, S&P 500 lost 4.7%. And this also makes uh, seven consecutive negative closes, a close in the red for the S&P 500. In addition to our uh, failure of the super committee, we also had Moody's now looking at France's debt and putting a cautious negative uh, outlook on the debt rating for France. So as far as Europe goes, we now have Spain, Italy, and now we're bringing in France. And of course, we know about the pigs, Portugal, Italy, Greece, Spain. And now we're bringing France into the mix. Uh, the other, uh, we do have some corporate news. We haven't had a lot of corporate news lately, but uh, AT and T basically announced that it's going to withdraw its merger plans. Not the merger plan, but their the consideration from the FCC. They're going to withdraw that plan, and they're going to focus on the uh, the U.S. Uh, Department of Justice, which has filed a legal action to block the merger. And at and also put, a, put to the side $4 billion just in case this T-Mobile AT&T deal doesn't work. So um, that was the major corporate news of the week. There really wasn't anything on the economic front. It was really pretty much underwhelming. Um, uh, there were some minutes from the Fed, but nothing really that really uh, obviously uh, gave any hope <laughs> to the buyers on the market. Now coming into this week, we don't have anything on the on the earnings front. We do have some things here on the economic front, uh, with the biggest things being uh, ADP on Wednesday and the employment situation on Friday. But we also have in between there, we have consumer confidence on Tuesday, and uh, we have several ISM, the Dallas Fed uh, manufacturing survey, um, uh, kind of scrunched in between there. So. Uh, we do have some catalysts this week that maybe we'll be able to uh, stop this fall. Let's pull the charts and see where we are and where we might go. We are starting off with the daily chart of the S&P 500. But what's important to note about that is where we started off uh, at the beginning of the week, right here. And we said if we broke the 1200, we were probably heading all the way back down to test the August uh, lows, October lows, and it looks like that. We had our inside bar here. We broke right through that, uh, closed below two, uh, 1,200, put in another one. Big day on third, uh, Wednesday, and then here's our Friday bar, which is, looks like an inverted hammer. So what's important to watch is the 11-20 uh, range. Uh, to see if this will hold up. It makes sense now. There's not going to be a lot of volume uh, resistance here. The closest thing that we could say to that is going to be the 11.50 uh, price level. And we can see that by looking right here that some of our wicks in here were around 11.50. So uh, 
So that's our next area of interest to watch. Whoops. Let's zoom back out here. There we go. So there's our 1150. Uh, if we break 1150, it's starting to make sense that we'll go down and test 1120. Now, when we zoom out, our indicators, uh, stochastic is oversold now. RSI basically is getting there to oversold. MACD has a little bit more. MACD has been lagging for a while, though. Uh, so our daily indicators are definitely bears, definitely oversold. When we zoom out to the weekly and zoom on in, we can see, look at these candles coming down here. Two candles are PPS indicators. Go ahead, giving us a down indicator. But we have potential support here at the uh, 200 moving average. And we can see our indicators are, show more room to go down. And so maybe we'll test this 200 in the 1120 here on a weekly. We'll go out one more time to the monthly. And we can see the, the lovely uptrend we've been in. But look at these two candles here. So here's our September. Here's our October. And now we're putting another inside bar in here in uh, November with a couple of days left. Uh, that's basically wiping out all of this uh, good October move. And our monthly indicators are saying that there's more room to go down. So it seems likely that we'll go back and test the 11.20 range. And then we'll have to reevaluate and see what happens from there. Now, as far as the NASDAQ, uh, what we can see here on our daily chart, here we are breaking that 25, 20th range and coming right on down. Now, like the SP 500, there is a mid range here around 2410. 2400, 2410, there is a little mid range that we'll see what happens there. But if we don't bounce there like we did back here in September and August, then we're certainly going to retest these August and October lows. Oversold on stochastic, basically there on RSI, MACD lagging a little behind. We'll zoom out to the weekly. And we can see again. Uh, basically four straight weekly candles down uh, a couple of dojis here once we got out of this range we're making our move down again we'll have to watch this 2400 price level see if we actually do reach the lows our indicators definitely bearish and finally all the way out to the monthly and we can see our two inside bars for September in November, a good move up on October. Uh, 50 moving average here needs to hold up as support. Now remember, S&P 500 on the monthly is all the way down here. We are going to go ahead and start off with some uh, look at our market leaders, starting off with Apple. One thing we can see here with Apple is that we're already resting here at the 200 moving average. That support about 365. Uh, what's important to note about that is when we look at our October came down and bounced off the 200, so we may find some support here at the 200 moving average. However, if we don't find support there, you can see where we bounced here matches that with some swing lows right in here. So this is 352. So if we keep heading lower, 352 has to be our next uh, point of point of interest. Uh, but overall, we can definitely say that Apple looks bearish. Now, I say that cautiously because you also have to say, if you look at it from uh, July, this has been the range. Uh, this 350 up to 400. We've been in that range. So you, you can make a very strong argument for sideways. Uh, um, and so, you know, for some of you, maybe I'll just say sideways to down. But of course, you can see the last two, three weeks down. So sideways to down for Apple. Amazon. Here with Amazon, we can see that uh, we've already made it through the 200 moving average. And you see that our test in October didn't even make it here. So we already made it through the 200 moving average. And now we're breaking through another key price level. Uh, certainly we need to watch this swing low right here, which is at 178. Um, so Amazon 
you could kind of say is out of that range that we were in from July. And you can make an argument here also that it's down. Um, but for those, some might say sideways are down also because we haven't broken this uh, August swing low yet. Uh, next up we have is Google. And we'll uh, zoom on in here for Google. Um, and you can see it was ho holding up its gap pretty well. Uh, while the rest of the market for November was pulling down, Google was hanging up. But eventually, it gave way. And in, in, in what we talked about last video, once we filled this gap of 577, watch for the break. It has done just that. Once it broke 577, it's come down. And here it is looking at its 200 moving average. It has basically filled this gap. So from here, we'll have to see if it can break, bounce, I'm sorry, at the 20 moving average and our support level here at 550. If not, we'll, we'll see some more downward action. So, but Google will we'll say sideways. Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs obviously in a big downtrend. We got a nice little move up here in October and gave it all back in November. And we're basically basing now at the uh, open here for our October low. So we'll, we'll have to see here, uh, certainly a price level to watch is this 87.50. And what's important about that is that, remember, we have a 3 to $4 wick here. So it's kind of hard to say where in there we may stop. You can see on the market profile that we had a big move up and a pullback. So uh, sideways are down for Goldman Sachs. Uh, moving on to IBM. Zoom on in here. And um, IBM was holding up, but you can see the last two weeks it's kind of given up the ghost. And now it's sitting at a support of 176. If it breaks here, it may join the rest of the market and come down here and test the 200 moving average at 171. Intel. Intel put in a nice little M double top pattern here, broke 23.50. Now it looks like it's heading down here to the 200 moving average like the rest of the market. We, got, we do have a little swing high in here that it looks like it's trying to bounce at. If it breaks at 22.50 range, 22-ish, then again it looks like it's probably going down another dollar, another 75 cents instead of to the 200 and maybe even a 500 moving average. But for this one, we would definitely say sideways are down also. What about MasterCard? MasterCard, very nice uptrend, giving a good also. Now it's back in this range. If it breaks the 50 moving average here at 343, makes sense for it to come down here and test the bottom of our channel. Sideways on MasterCard. Netflix. Netflix, which has definitely given up the ghost from 300 down to 63 and what's important about noting that is that we've now uh, this uh, gap down earnings low here we've broken that now keep in mind each time we've hit this 20 moving average we made new lows so we'll have to see what's going to happen here uh, those who wrote it up I hope you got in early as it's coming back down uh, and now we'll finish off with Priceline well, you can see right here just the, the, the range bound. Even though it's coming all the way down, uh, you can see from Ju June, July, we've been definitely been in a range for the market here it's with a bounce being at 448. So we'll see what happens here at 448. Um, will it have the strength already through the 200 moving average? Will it have the strength? We're getting ready to have all these moving average cross below the 200 moving average. Uh, if We'll see what happens here at 448 if it's going to bounce here like it has so many times before. Okay, now we're going to finish off with our market sentiment leaders. Uh, so we're starting off with the dollar. And you can see this big move down that we were in for a while, we consolidated, had a great month of September, fell off here in October. 
Now November, we're, we're getting back up and getting ready to retest this high. I'm going for this larger view because I want you to see this 79 uh, line here and also the 81. So as we zoom in, you can kind of see where we are in that range. Certainly, it looks like we may go back and retest the 8050, which is our swing high from October. Um, that certainly looks right. But, and again, this is a week of employment situation, which can affect the dollar. But And you can also see that inverse relationship of the dollar and the stock market. So the dollar looks strong, um, closed above 79, closed above the 500 million hours, nice rising three pattern, inside bar, broke right through it. Um, looks like it wants to retest. And then now we'll have to see if it retests here, uh, where it goes from there. Uh, gold has shown a little weakness here. And we'll zoom on in for you. And you can see we we did we never got above these wicks in here. And this is where we mentioned before. We never got above these wicks, the 1800. And you know, we tested a couple times and then we, we kind of gave up the ghost on that one. Zoom in a little bit more so you can see. So once we never closed above 1800, we came back, broke 1750, and now we're all the way back down here. Some inside bars here, definitely potential weakness. If we close below 1680, you know, now we start to get back into this range, which could bring us all the way back down to 1600. Finally, we'll look at crude oil, which has been a beautiful chart here. But once we hit 102, and this is what we said, what we told you was when you zoom back to the beginning of the year, we were in this range of 96 up to 102. So when we, just make sure I, you guys see that with my clicks here, 96 to 102. So when we hit 102 here, we said that's the range, watch out, and we've come right on back down. And, and finding support at the 20 to 200 moving average, and uh, we put an inside bar and came right above it. So there is some, our, our aggressive uh, traders probably already in with the break of the inside bar, looking for a move back up to 90, 102. As we come to our education spotlight, we continue to talk about. Um, Trading plans, trading system, trading rules. Specifically, we're continuing to talk about trading rules and why we need to have those rules. Now, again, remember the trading plan is our overall business plan. It includes our goals, our objectives, and um, you know, an overview of how we're going to get there. The system is how we're going to get there, and the trading rules are the implementation, the actual how we actually implement that trading system. And so, what's important about the rules is that it allows us to remove our emotions. I often say that emotions is what kills 80% of traders. They make bad emotional decisions, which lead to bad emotional investments, which leads to bad emotional pain from those decisions. And so the rules allow us to take those emotions out of our, our trading. And it allows us to, but the only way we can effectively do that is to do it, an honest self-evaluation and accept where we're strong, where we're weak. I know that um, the managing of the trade is my weakness from the standpoint of I prefer to have an automatic trailing stop than a manual trailing stop. Um, you know, I'd rather let it be robotic versus moving a stop up and down. So I know my weakness and therefore my system is implemented that way. My rules are implemented that way for a trailing stop. You may be different. So that's when I say when you have to have an honest assessment of knowing where you're strong, where you're weak, and make sure that your rules are uh, account for that so that you are, again, properly trading, letting your rules work, letting your positive expectancy work, and not self-sabotaging your trading results. As you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? Yeah, that's right. We have our free five-part video course on high probability trading. We hope that will give you insight to who we are as coaches and how we can help you one-on-one -on -one develop that trading plan, that uh, a trader's mindset where you can implement your trading rules. We have our high probability trading course, again, that you can get an insight from, from our free course. Again, notice that it's only $99. It has three parts. Introduction, which is about technical analysis, chart patterns, uh, trading systems, all of that. Then we have a second se section on the trading plan components, and then we have a third section where we focus on different trading setups. Most people are charging 
fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars, we're charging ninety nine dollars because we want you to get the information. But as we say, it's not the information, it's the trader's mindset. And so we want you to be able to have money to get the mindset coaching that you need uh, to implement all of the systems properly. If you're trading futures, we've got a great futures brokers. And today, margin is low as $300, 20 free trades if you sign up to us. And our charter package works on both PC and Mac. Run your scans, find the latest moving stocks. But as we just said, it doesn't make a difference what system you have or indicator you're following if you can't pull the trigger. And that's what we can help you do. Develop that trader's mindset to develop a plan that has a system and implement your rules on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.